Listexamphetamine, contracted from L-lysine dextroamphetamine, is a substituted amphetamine and an inactive prodrug of the central nervous system CNS, stimulant dextroamphetamine that is used in the treatment of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder ADHD, and binge eating disorder. Its chemical structure consists of dextroamphetamine coupled with the essential amino acid L-lysine. Listexamphetamine itself is inactive prior to its absorption and the subsequent rate-limited enzymatic cleavage of the molecule's L-lysine portion, which produces the active metabolite dextroamphetamine. Listexamphetamine can be prescribed for the treatment of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder (ADHD) in adults and children 6 and older, as well as for moderate to severe binge eating disorder in adults. The safety and the efficacy of listexamphetamine demesylate in children with ADHD 3 to 5 years old have not been established. Listexamphetamine is a class B schedule 2 substance in the United Kingdom and a schedule 2 controlled substance in the United States. DIA number 1205 and the aggregate production quota for 2016 in the United States is 29,750 kg of anhydrous acid or base. Listexamphetamine is currently in Phase 3 trials in Japan for ADHD. Uses Medical Listexamphetamine is used primarily as a treatment for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder ADHD, and binge eating disorder. It has similar off-label uses as those of other pharmaceutical amphetamines. Individuals over the age of 65 were not commonly tested in clinical trials of listexamphetamine for ADHD. Long-term amphetamine exposure at sufficiently high doses in some animal species is known to produce abnormal dopamine system development or nerve damage, but, in humans with ADHD, pharmaceutical amphetamines appear to improve brain development and nerve growth. Reviews of magnetic resonance imaging MRI, studies suggest that long-term treatment with amphetamine decreases abnormalities in brain structure and function found in subjects with ADHD, and improves function in several parts of the brain, such as the right caudate nucleus of the basal ganglia. Reviews of clinical stimulant research have established the safety and effectiveness of long-term continuous amphetamine use for the treatment of ADHD. Randomized controlled trials of continuous stimulant therapy for the treatment of ADHD spanning two years have demonstrated treatment effectiveness and safety. Two reviews have indicated that long-term continuous stimulant therapy for ADHD is effective for reducing the core symptoms of ADHD i.e., hyperactivity, inattention, and impulsivity, enhancing quality of life and academic achievement, and producing improvements in a large number of functional outcomes across nine categories of outcomes related to academics, antisocial behavior, driving, non-medicinal drug use, obesity, occupation, self-esteem, service use i.e., academic, occupation health, financial, and legal services, and social function. One review highlighted a nine-month randomized controlled trial of amphetamine treatment for ADHD in children that found an average increase of 4.5 IQ points, continued increases in attention, and continued decreases in disruptive behaviors and hyperactivity. Another review indicated that based upon the longest follow-up studies conducted to date, lifetime stimulant therapy that begins during childhood is continuously effective for controlling ADHD symptoms and reduces the risk of developing a substance use disorder as an adult. Current models of ADHD suggest that it is associated with functional impairments in some of the brain. S neurotransmitter systems, these functional impairments involve impaired dopamine neurotransmission in the mesocorticolimbic projection and norepinephrine neurotransmission in the noradrenergic projections from the locus ceruleus to the prefrontal cortex. Psychostimulants like methylphenidate and amphetamine are effective in treating ADHD because they increase neurotransmitter activity in these systems. Approximately 80% of those who use these stimulants see improvements in ADHD symptoms. Children with ADHD who use stimulant medications generally have better relationships with peers and family members, perform better in school, are less distractible and impulsive, and have longer attention spans. The Cochrane Collaboration S. Reviews on the treatment of ADHD in children, adolescents, and adults with pharmaceutical amphetamines stated that while these drugs improve short-term symptoms, they have higher discontinuation rates than non-stimulant medications due to their adverse side effects. 
A Cochrane Collaboration Review on the Treatment of ADHD in Children with Tic Disorders such as Tourette Syndrome indicated that stimulants in general do not make tics worse, but high doses of dextroamphetamine could exacerbate tics in some individuals. Enhancing performance Cognitive performance in 2015, a systematic review and a meta-analysis of high-quality clinical trials found that, when used at low therapeutic doses, amphetamine produces modest yet unambiguous improvements in cognition, including working memory, long-term episodic memory, inhibitory control, and some aspects of attention. In normal healthy adults, these cognition-enhancing effects of amphetamine are known to be partially mediated through the indirect activation of both dopamine receptor D1 and adrenoceptor alpha-2 in the prefrontal cortex. A systematic review from 2014 found that low doses of amphetamine also improve memory consolidation, in turn leading to improved recall of information. Therapeutic doses of amphetamine also enhance cortical network efficiency, an effect which mediates improvements in working memory in all individuals. Amphetamine and other ADHD stimulants also improve task saliency, motivation to perform a task, and increase arousal, wakefulness, in turn promoting goal-directed behavior. Stimulants such as amphetamine can improve performance on difficult and boring tasks and are used by some students as a study and test-taking aid. Based upon studies of self-reported illicit stimulant use, 5 to 35% of college students use diverted ADHD stimulants, which are primarily used for performance enhancement rather than as recreational drugs. However, high amphetamine doses that are above the therapeutic range can interfere with working memory and other aspects of cognitive control. Physical performance Amphetamine is used by some athletes for its psychological and athletic performance enhancing effects, such as increased endurance and alertness. However, non medical amphetamine use is prohibited at sporting events that are regulated by collegiate, national, and international anti doping agencies. In healthy people at oral therapeutic doses, amphetamine has been shown to increase muscle strength, acceleration, athletic performance in anaerobic conditions, and endurance, i.e., it delays the onset of fatigue, while improving reaction time. Amphetamine improves endurance and reaction time primarily through reuptake inhibition and effluxion of dopamine in the central nervous system. Amphetamine and other dopaminergic drugs also increase power output at fixed levels of perceived exertion by overriding a safety switch that allows the core temperature limit to increase in order to access a reserve capacity that is normally off limits at therapeutic doses the adverse effects of amphetamine do not impede athletic performance however at much higher doses amphetamine can induce effects that severely impair performance such as rapid muscle breakdown and elevated body temperature contraindications Pharmaceutical listexamphetamine demesylate is contraindicated in patients with hypersensitivity to amphetamine products or any of the formulation's inactive ingredients. It is also contraindicated in patients who have used a monoamine oxidase inhibitor MAUI, within the last 14 days. Amphetamine products are contraindicated by the United States Food and Drug Administration USFDA, in people with a history of drug abuse, heart disease, or severe agitation or anxiety, or in those currently experiencing arteriosclerosis, glaucoma, hyperthyroidism, or severe hypertension. The US FDA advises anyone with bipolar disorder, depression, elevated blood pressure, liver or kidney problems, mania, psychosis, Raynaud's phenomenon, seizures, thyroid problems, tics, or Tourette syndrome to monitor their symptoms while taking amphetamine. Amphetamine is classified in U.S. pregnancy category C. This means that detriments to the fetus have been observed in animal studies and adequate human studies have not been conducted. Amphetamine may still be prescribed to pregnant women if the potential benefits outweigh the risks. Amphetamine has also been shown to pass into breast milk, so the U.S. FDA advises mothers to avoid breastfeeding when using it. Due to the potential for stunted growth, the US FDA advises monitoring the height and weight of children and adolescents prescribed amphetamines. Prescribing information approved by the Australian Therapeutic Goods Administration further contraindicates anorexia. Side effects 
Products containing Listex amphetamine have a side effect profile comparable to those containing amphetamine. Physical At normal therapeutic doses, the physical side effects of amphetamine vary widely by age and from person to person. Cardiovascular side effects can include hypertension or hypotension from a vasovagal response, Raynaud's phenomenon, reduced blood flow to the hands and feet, and tachycardia, increased heart rate. Sexual side effects in males may include erectile dysfunction, frequent erections, or prolonged erections. Abdominal side effects may include abdominal pain, appetite loss, nausea, and weight loss. Other potential side effects include blurred vision, dry mouth, excessive grinding of the teeth, nosebleed, profuse sweating, rhinitis medicamentosa, drug-induced nasal congestion, reduced seizure threshold, and tics, a type of movement disorder. Dangerous physical side effects are rare at typical pharmaceutical doses. Amphetamine stimulates the medullary respiratory centers, producing faster and deeper breaths. In a normal person at therapeutic doses, this effect is usually not noticeable, but when respiration is already compromised, it may be evident. Amphetamine also induces contraction in the urinary bladder sphincter, the muscle which controls urination, which can result in difficulty urinating. This effect can be useful in treating bed wetting and loss of bladder control. The effects of amphetamine on the gastrointestinal tract are unpredictable. If intestinal activity is high, amphetamine may reduce gastrointestinal motility, the rate at which content moves through the digestive system. However, amphetamine may increase motility when the smooth muscle of the tract is relaxed. Amphetamine also has a slight analgesic effect and can enhance the pain relieving effects of opioids. US FDA commissioned studies from 2011 indicate that in children, young adults, and adults there is no association between serious adverse cardiovascular events, sudden death, heart attack, and stroke, and the medical use of amphetamine or other ADHD stimulants. However, amphetamine pharmaceuticals are contraindicated in individuals with cardiovascular disease. Psychological At normal therapeutic doses, the most common psychological side effects of amphetamine include increased alertness, apprehension, concentration, initiative, self-confidence, and sociability, mood swings, elated mood followed by mildly depressed mood, insomnia or wakefulness, and decreased sense of fatigue. Less common side effects include anxiety, change in libido, grandiosity, irritability, repetitive or obsessive behaviors, and restlessness. These effects depend on the user's personality and current mental state. Amphetamine psychosis e.g., delusions and paranoia can occur in heavy users. Although very rare, this psychosis can also occur at therapeutic doses during long-term therapy. According to the US FDA, there is no systematic evidence that stimulants produce aggressive behavior or hostility. Amphetamine has also been shown to produce a conditioned place preference in humans taking therapeutic doses, meaning that individuals acquire a preference for spending time in places where they have previously used amphetamine. Overdose An amphetamine overdose can lead to many different symptoms, but is rarely fatal with appropriate care. The severity of overdose symptoms increases with dosage and decreases with drug tolerance to amphetamine. Tolerant individuals have been known to take as much as 5 grams of amphetamine in a day, which is roughly 100 times the maximum daily therapeutic dose. Symptoms of a moderate and extremely large overdose are listed below. Fatal amphetamine poisoning usually also involves convulsions and coma. In 2013, overdose on amphetamine, methamphetamine, and other compounds implicated in an Amphetamine use disorder resulted in an estimated 3,788 deaths worldwide, 3,425 to 4,145 deaths, 95% confidence, pathological overactivation of the mesolimbic pathway, a dopamine pathway that connects the ventral tegmental area to the nucleus accumbens, plays a central role in amphetamine addiction. Individuals who frequently overdose on amphetamine during recreational use have a high risk of developing an amphetamine addiction, since repeated overdoses gradually increase the level of accumbal delta FOSB, a molecular switch, and master control protein, 
For addiction, once nucleus accumbens delta FOSB is sufficiently overexpressed, it begins to increase the severity of addictive behavior, i.e., compulsive drug seeking, with further increases in its expression. While there are currently no effective drugs for treating amphetamine addiction, regularly engaging in sustained aerobic exercise appears to reduce the risk of developing such an addiction. Sustained aerobic exercise on a regular basis also appears to be an effective treatment for amphetamine addiction. Exercise therapy improves clinical treatment outcomes and may be used as a combination therapy with cognitive behavioral therapy, which is currently the best clinical treatment available. Addiction Addiction is a serious risk with heavy recreational amphetamine use but is unlikely to arise from typical long-term medical use at therapeutic doses. Compared to other amphetamine pharmaceuticals, Listex amphetamine may have a lower liability for abuse as a recreational drug. Drug tolerance develops rapidly in amphetamine abuse, i.e., a recreational amphetamine overdose. So periods of extended use require increasingly larger doses of the drug in order to achieve the same effect. Biomolecular mechanisms Chronic use of amphetamine at excessive doses causes alterations in gene expression in the mesocorticolimbic projection, which arise through transcriptional and epigenetic mechanisms. The most important transcription factors that produce these alterations are delta FOSB, CAMP response element binding protein, CREB, and nuclear factor kappa B, NF kappa B. Delta FOSB is the most significant biomolecular mechanism in addiction because the overexpression of delta FOSB in the D1 type medium spiny neurons in the nucleus accumbens is necessary and sufficient for many of the neural adaptations and behavioral effects, e.g., expression dependent increases in drug self-administration and reward sensitization, seen in drug addiction. Once delta FOSB is sufficiently overexpressed, it induces an addictive state that becomes increasingly more severe with further increases in delta FOSB expression. It has been implicated in addictions to alcohol, cannabinoids, cocaine, methylphenidate, nicotine, opioids, phencyclidine, propofol, and substituted amphetamines, among others, delta jund, a transcription factor, and G9A, a histone methyltransferase enzyme, both oppose the function of delta FOSB and inhibit increases in its expression. Sufficiently overexpressing delta jund in the nucleus accumbens with viral vectors can completely block many of the neural and behavioral alterations seen in chronic drug abuse, i.e., the alterations mediated by delta FOSB. Delta FOSB also plays an important role in regulating behavioral responses to natural rewards, such as palatable food, sex, and exercise. Since both natural rewards and addictive drugs induce expression of delta FOSB, i.e., they cause the brain to produce more of it, chronic acquisition of these rewards can result in a similar pathological state of addiction. Consequently, delta FOSB is the most significant factor involved in both amphetamine addiction and amphetamine induced sex addictions, which are compulsive sexual behaviors that result from excessive sexual activity and amphetamine use. These sex addictions are associated with a dopamine dysregulation syndrome which occurs in some patients taking dopaminergic drugs. The effects of amphetamine on gene regulation are both dose and route dependent. Most of the research on gene regulation and addiction is based upon animal studies with intravenous amphetamine administration at very high doses. The few studies that have used equivalent, weight-adjusted, human therapeutic doses and oral administration show that these changes, if they occur, are relatively minor. This suggests that medical use of amphetamine does not significantly affect gene regulation. Pharmacological treatments As of 2015, there is no effective pharmacotherapy for amphetamine addiction. Reviews from 2015 and 2016 indicated that TAAR1 selective agonists have significant therapeutic potential as a treatment for psychostimulant addictions, however, as of February 2016, the only compounds which are known to function as TAAR1 selective agonists are experimental drugs. Amphetamine addiction is largely mediated through increased activation of dopamine receptors and co-localized NMDA receptors in the nucleus accumbens. Magnesium ions inhibit NMDA receptors by blocking the receptor calcium channel. One review suggested that, based upon animal testing, pathological, addiction-inducing, psychostimulant use significantly reduces the level of intracellular magnesium throughout the brain. 
Supplemental magnesium treatment has been shown to reduce amphetamine self-administration i.e., doses given to oneself, in humans, but it is not an effective monotherapy for amphetamine addiction. Behavioral treatments Cognitive behavioral therapy is currently the most effective clinical treatment for psychostimulant addictions. Additionally, research on the neurobiological effects of physical exercise suggests that daily aerobic exercise, especially endurance exercise e.g., marathon running, prevents the development of drug addiction and is an effective adjunct therapy i.e., a supplemental treatment for amphetamine addiction. Exercise leads to better treatment outcomes when used as an adjunct treatment, particularly for psychostimulant addictions. In particular, aerobic exercise decreases psychostimulant self-administration, reduces the reinstatement i.e., relapse of drug seeking, and induces increased dopamine receptor D2, DRD2, density in the striatum. This is the opposite of pathological stimulant use, which induces decreased striatal DRD2 density. One review noted that exercise may also prevent the development of a drug addiction by altering delta FOSB or C phosimmunoreactivity in the striatum or other parts of the reward system. Dependence and withdrawal. According to another Cochrane collaboration review on withdrawal in individuals who compulsively use amphetamine and methamphetamine. When chronic heavy users abruptly discontinue amphetamine use, many report a time-limited withdrawal syndrome that occurs within 24 hours of their last dose. This review noted that withdrawal symptoms in chronic, high-dose users are frequent, occurring in roughly 88% of cases, and persist for three to four weeks with a marked crash phase occurring during the first week. Amphetamine withdrawal symptoms can include anxiety, drug craving, depressed mood, fatigue, increased appetite, increased movement or decreased movement, lack of motivation, sleeplessness or sleepiness, and lucid dreams. The review indicated that the severity of withdrawal symptoms is positively correlated with the age of the individual and the extent of their dependence. Mild withdrawal symptoms from the discontinuation of amphetamine treatment at therapeutic doses can be avoided by tapering the dose. Toxicity In rodents and primates, sufficiently high doses of amphetamine cause dopaminergic neurotoxicity, or damage to dopamine neurons, which is characterized by dopamine terminal degeneration and reduced transporter and receptor function. There is no evidence that amphetamine is directly neurotoxic in humans. However, large doses of amphetamine may indirectly cause dopaminergic neurotoxicity as a result of hyperpyrexia, the excessive formation of reactive oxygen species, and increased autooxidation of dopamine. Animal models of neurotoxicity from high-dose amphetamine exposure indicate that the occurrence of hyperpyrexia i.e., core body temperature 40 degrees Celsius is necessary for the development of amphetamine-induced neurotoxicity. Prolonged elevations of brain temperature above 40 degrees Celsius likely promote the development of amphetamine-induced neurotoxicity in laboratory animals by facilitating the production of reactive oxygen species, disrupting cellular protein function, and transiently increasing blood-brain barrier permeability. Psychosis a severe amphetamine overdose can result in a stimulant psychosis that may involve a variety of symptoms, such as delusions and paranoia. A Cochrane collaboration review on treatment for amphetamine, dextroamphetamine, and methamphetamine psychosis states that about 5 to 15 percent of users fail to recover completely. According to the same review, there is at least one trial that shows antipsychotic medications effectively resolve the symptoms of acute amphetamine psychosis. Psychosis very rarely arises from therapeutic use. Interactions Acidifying agents, drugs that acidify the urine, such as ascorbic acid, increase urinary excretion of dextroamphetamine, thus decreasing the half-life of dextroamphetamine in the body. Alkalinizing agents, drugs that alkalinize the urine, such as sodium bicarbonate, decrease urinary excretion of dextroamphetamine, thus increasing the half-life of dextroamphetamine in the body. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors, concomitant use of MAOIs and central nervous system stimulants such as listexamphetamine can cause a hypertensive crisis. Pharmacology 
Mechanism of action Listexamphetamine is an inactive prodrug that is converted in the body to dextroamphetamine, a pharmacologically active compound which is responsible for the drug's activity. After oral ingestion, listexamphetamine is broken down by enzymes in red blood cells to form L-lysine, a naturally occurring essential amino acid, and dextroamphetamine. The conversion of listexamphetamine to dextroamphetamine is not affected by gastrointestinal pH and is unlikely to be affected by alterations in normal gastrointestinal transit times. The optical isomers of amphetamine, i.e., dextroamphetamine and levoamphetamine, are TAAR1 agonists and vesicular monoamine transporter 2 inhibitors that can enter monoamine neurons. This allows them to release monoamine neurotransmitters, dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, among others, from their storage sites in the pre synaptic neuron, as well as prevent the reuptake of these neurotransmitters from the synaptic cleft. Listexamphetamine was developed with the goal of providing a long duration of effect that is consistent throughout the day, with reduced potential for abuse. The attachment of the amino acid lysine slows down the relative amount of dextroamphetamine available to the bloodstream. Because no free dextroamphetamine is present in listexamphetamine capsules, dextroamphetamine does not become available through mechanical manipulation, such as crushing or simple extraction. A relatively sophisticated biochemical process is needed to produce dextroamphetamine from listexamphetamine. As opposed to Adderall, which contains roughly equal parts of racemic amphetamine and dextroamphetamine salts, listexamphetamine is a single enantiomer dextroamphetamine formula. Studies conducted show that listexamphetamine demesylate may have less abuse potential than dextroamphetamine and an abuse profile similar to diethylpropion at dosages that are FDA approved for treatment of ADHD, but still has a high abuse potential when this dosage is exceeded by over 100%. Pharmacokinetics the oral bioavailability of amphetamine varies with gastrointestinal pH, it is well absorbed from the gut, and bioavailability is typically over 75% for dextroamphetamine. Amphetamine is a weak base with a pKa of 9. 9. Consequently, when the pH is basic, more of the drug is in its lipid-soluble free base form, and more is absorbed through the lipid-rich cell membranes of the gut epithelium. Conversely, an acidic pH means the drug is predominantly in a water-soluble cationic salt form, and less is absorbed. Approximately 15-40% of amphetamine circulating in the bloodstream is bound to plasma proteins. Following absorption, amphetamine readily distributes into most tissues in the body, with high concentrations occurring in cerebrospinal fluid and brain tissue. The half-life of amphetamine enantiomers differ and vary with urine pH. At normal urine pH, the half-lives of dextroamphetamine and levoamphetamine are 9-11 hours and 11-14 hours, respectively. Highly acidic urine will reduce the enantiomer half-lives to 7 hours, highly alkaline urine will increase the half-lives up to 34 hours. The immediate release and extended release variants of salts of both isomers reach peak plasma concentrations at 3 hours and 7 hours post-dose respectively. Amphetamine is eliminated via the kidneys, with 30-40% of the drug being excreted unchanged at normal urinary pH. When the urinary pH is basic, amphetamine is in its free base form, so less is excreted. When urine pH is abnormal, the urinary recovery of amphetamine may range from a low of 1% to a high of 75%, depending mostly upon whether urine is too basic or acidic, respectively. Following oral administration, amphetamine appears in urine within three hours. Roughly 90% of ingested amphetamine is eliminated three days after the last oral dose. The prodrug listexamphetamine is not as sensitive to pH as amphetamine when being absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract. Following absorption into the bloodstream, it is converted by red blood cell-associated enzymes to dextroamphetamine via hydrolysis. The elimination half-life of listexamphetamine is generally less than one hour. CYP2D6, dopamine beta-hydroxylase (DBH), flavin-containing monooxygenase 3 (FMO3), butyrate coa-ligase (XM ligase), and glycine N-acyltransferase (GLYAT) are the enzymes known to metabolize amphetamine or its metabolites in humans. 
Amphetamine has a variety of excreted metabolic products, including 4-hydroxyamphetamine, 4-hydroxynorephedrine, 4-hydroxyphenylacetone, benzoic acid, hippuric acid, norephedrine, and phenylacetone. Among these metabolites, the active sympathomimetics are 4-hydroxyamphetamine, 4-hydroxynorephedrine, and norephedrine. The main metabolic pathways involve aromatic para-hydroxylation, aliphatic alpha and beta-hydroxylation, N-oxidation, and dealkylation, and deamination. The known metabolic pathways, detectable metabolites, and metabolizing enzymes in humans include the following. Chemistry Listexamphetamine demesylate is a water-soluble powder with a white to off-white color. Comparison to other formulations Listexamphetamine demesylate is one marketed formulation delivering dextroamphetamine. The following table compares the drug to other amphetamine pharmaceuticals. History, Society, and Culture Listexamphetamine was developed by New River Pharmaceuticals, who were bought by Shire Pharmaceuticals shortly before Listexamphetamine began being marketed. It was developed for the intention of creating a longer-lasting and less easily abused version of dextroamphetamine, as the requirement of conversion into dextroamphetamine via enzymes in the red blood cells delays its onset of action, regardless of the route of ingestion. On 23 April 2008, Vivance received FDA approval for the adult population. On 19 February 2009, Health Canada approved 30 mg and 50 mg capsules of listexamphetamine for treatment of ADHD. In January 2015, listexamphetamine was approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for treatment of binge eating disorder in adults. Brand names as of July 2014 Listexamphetamine was sold under the following brands, Elvance, Samexid, Tyvance, Venvance, and Vivance. Research Depression some clinical trials that used listexamphetamine as an add-on therapy with a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor SSRI, or serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor SNRI, for treatment-resistant depression indicated that this is no more effective than the use of an SSRI or SNRI alone. Other studies indicated that psychostimulants potentiated antidepressants, and were under-prescribed for treatment-resistant depression. In those studies patients showed significant improvement in energy, mood, and psychomotor activity. In February 2014, Shire announced that two late-stage clinical trials had shown that Vivance was not an effective treatment for depression. Notes Image legend Reference notes References